in SEO as an SEO spanning the last 13 years and, and counting. I've been an SEO tester, so I share some of the things I'm testing, some of the research and the data. Now the views expressed here are my own and do not necessarily reflect those of Google or more importantly, your understanding of what Google is. I don't think that they are driven to have yours or my business's best interest at heart. So I do not regurgitate Google announcements. I watch their feet. So if you're an independent agency or uh, independent SEO, I get you. And if you're a business owner or a stakeholder who doesn't really understand SEO, well, you'll never guess. But before I was magically turned into an SEO, I was a local business owner for decades who also thought a lot about how to get more customers. So let's get started. Welcome to season two, episode 28. This is week five of the summer editions of Confessions. Remember, you can check out last week's episode. It was a topic submitted by one of our sponsors, and we talked about how do you know if your SEO is working. Today, here's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to chat first and just give you a little fair warning. It might include a little venting. Mainly, just how frustrating it is dealing with business owners who don't really know uh, wh wh what they're really doing in terms of digital marketing. Because from what I see from business owners and stakeholders, y'all are a little bipolar when it comes to knowing what success looks like. You know, let's also not forget that out there, there are salespeople who sold business owners by promising specific numbers and traffic based on time duration, not any idea where they're ranking, <laughs> you know, but, but somehow they did that without having the faintest clue as to how search engines re really work. So if you are one of those business owners in one city who is looking to see if your business ranks in another city's maps about 25 or 30 miles away, let me tell you right now, you are not going to find yourself. And could we just agree that your lack of understanding how a search engine works does not mean the SEO strategy is wrong? See, I was planning to do a whole episode on just this topic, but I'm so pissed off that I think I need to settle down just a little bit before I start to breathe more fire into your ears. So here I go. I'm going to breathe deep and think calm blue ocean. I, I really need to talk about something that has a different energy to it. So <laughs> anybody interested in the latest from the mobile first indexing test? Now, this is the one where I optimized a set of mobile files to push the desktop rankings. I'm just going to paraphrase the results. Holy cow. Ah. If you're an SEO modifying how much content the mobile rendering of your site contains and removing things where you have your SEO on the desktop just to make it so that it renders fast on the phone, I want to challenge you to a test. Whether you know how to do this or not, find somebody, get somebody if you're not technical, and do what I'm about to tell you. Take notes. <laughs> Take the toughest keyword you are working on that isn't already in the top three. Make a copy of your, your current setup for that page. And then set your old page to draft and remove any of the instructions to reduce what's showing on mobile devices, meaning like you're going to duplicate the page and then you're going to set the original to draft and then you're going to modify this copy of, of your page. And you basically want to, um, once, once you, you take out all the changes, so you're going to, instead of uh, the current page that you have, that you've set up to change what shows on the mobile, 
make a copy and remove all those instructions so that what shows on the mobile is everything that's got your SEO on it. Now I'm going to assume that your page is already indexed and if that's the case, it's okay to go through Search Console and resubmit uh, that request for uh, re-indexing it, you know, recrawling it. Now note the day you do this. Get a baseline set of rankings and please use a third party do not try and do this with Search Console. Search Console isn't a rank tracker. Ugh. I use um, SERP Robot. They have a free option that includes, I think it's like 25 checks within 24 hours. So, it, But if you need more, it's not expensive. It's like $5 a month. So get your own robot. Now, do not pay any attention to anything that your brain, who's already in a panic now, will cough up about Core Web Vitals. Remember, this is a test, and you're an adult, so just tell your brain, remember, we have our original and safe and sound and ready to go back. Besides, there is zero data that Core Web Vitals has an impact on rankings, but that's another topic, and it was already covered earlier in the year. So the results in my setup on this test both confirm that mobile first indexing is what Google says it does. And that it also may play a part in the difference between desktop ranking and mobile ranking. I mean, if you aren't making sure that 100% of your optimization results, I'm sorry, your op optimization efforts are rendering in the mobile version of your page, take my word for it, you are missing out. I really want to speak to that FOMO part of you as an SEO. You know, the tough keyword that I started out with has jumped 32 spots from where it started. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just blowing smoke. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tester. This is documented. Okay. This is a live field test, real business, real search term. Now for privacy and due to potentially asshole SEOs, I will not publish the specific URLs. Now, in addition to this tough keyword that is now like gangbusters, every other non-brand keyword that I'm tracking for this site is on page one or the very top of page two, and everything that was already on page one is now above the fold. Now, I think we can call this test. You know, not every SEO test comes with such clear and resounding results. So if you're ready to take the mobile first indexing test challenge, don't waste another day. Now, I also realize as I'm saying all this that I haven't mentioned the indexation project lately. I know you're missing it. Um, and it really is, I mean, as exciting as the mobile first thing is, the mobile first test. Okay, I, I think that's more exciting. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, but the, the indexation research is really, really smoking. Um, now you may have been hearing and, um, some of the SEO, uh, sites, you know, about an, an unannounced Google update on July 10th. Well, I'm going to propose that there might be another cause of that volatility that happened on the 10th. You know, lately the weather tools have had the reports of volatility lower than normal. I mean, I, and then when I say lower than normal, I mean seriously lower, so low, I can honestly say that I cannot remember a time previously when SEMrush was lower than a two. Um, and not only that, during all of this, the JavaScript uh, indexing had been testing off for weeks. And, and regular indexing wasn't much better. So that, that's a little background there. So on July 10th, several people reported some volatility of their own rankings. Now it's, it's normal for there to be a one to two up or down. You know, that, that's not indicative of anything. But, you know, it can also happen that way, you know, that maybe somebody uh, climbed above you. And so if somebody climbs above you, that pushes you down, you know, or it's an update. <laughs> so those are usually like you know, everybody's options. But from what I saw in the server logs, I'm going to say, I think it might've been 
Google testing one Chromebot version against another. Now, I'm, I'm going to share a little bit of uh, what I do, which is I keep a few sites floating on the edge of the results, like page nine is where they rank. Um, I really um, don't do anything to them. I just sort of keep them out there and see what, what's going on. And between July 9th and 12th, one of these sites for one of its keywords jumped 23 spots. Now, I have done nothing to this site. And then out of the blue, it shot up. It's a Today, so far, I think, you know, it's it's it jumped 23 and then kind of did that little like up and down, up and down, up and down. But, um, but now it's up a total of 25 spots, basically, since July 9th. Now, why? Could there have been an update? You know, most of the time we think of updates as penalties. But what else might be going on? Well, turns out that on the 9th, Google used nine different bots. Five desktop, four mobile. And I can say with certainty, since I've been observing this data since last August, not a lot of people have. And I'm, I guess, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's super nerdy. But the most variance I have ever recorded in one day was seven. So this really caught my attention when it happened. And after that, they must have resolved something because things are back to the usual suspects. Now, Google has started to recrawl on the 12th, um, previously indexed content with a strong showing of, of their desktop bots. And then the next day, it was all about mobile rendering. So here's what I think that means. And I'm just going to describe it. I think we can set our alarms to a day, probably in the somewhat near future, when the weather tools are going to lose their minds and people will start shouting, oh my God, it's an unannounced update. That tremor we felt on the 10, it was portending an update. Now, I don't think so. I think what we're going to see is that for whatever reason, you know, the, testing that bot, you know, I think they were trying to figure out something. But I think that something has been resolved. I don't know what it is, but now that they've resolved it, they're recrawling and sort of kind of like, like a squirrel where they just like store nuts in their cheeks. Um, but they've got a lot of data. I'm going to say a pretty big backlog of data, probably. And they're going to flow it out. And they're going to flow it out. And it's going to look like there's some... Something happened in big, some huge update. But now you know, probably at that point, you'll know because you're listening here, what that actually is. So I hope that makes sense. You know, we're so used to being abused by the Google machine um, that, that somehow if I know more of what's going on, you know, it helps me stay the course and stay calm. If I know that it's just when that all happens, that what's happening is we're all catching up to the actual data that Google scores, then the bright side of that is we'll, we will see better. You know, our data will be better and we can figure out our next moves. I just really want to thank you. I feel a lot better <laughs> than I did when I started and I hope you do too. And that's going to do it for today. Next week, I may try my hand at the topic that I thought was going to be today's. Thank you for being a listener. And special thank you to the sponsors of Confessions. And if you would like to be a, a sponsor, you can do it easily. You can search for a confession of an SEO sponsor, or it's a bitly link, bit.ly slash confessions sponsor, two S's in the middle. And you can find Confessions wherever you're listening. And if you can, just subscribe. So let's make more business and success together. Let's strive to understand each other and Google better. We're after the same thing. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the service.